Blood of Jesus, speak for me. Blood of Jesus, fight for me. Blood of Jesus, speak for me. Blood of Jesus, fight for me. Hallelujah. 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 Word of God. Number one, you are hearing yourself. Faith will arise and a lot of things will happen inside of you. This one word of God can give you a thousand revelations. One word of God. Because there is something you need to hear. When Elijah came, he said, As the Lord God of Israel live before we must stand, there shall be no rain, no dew. The things affected him. Listen to what the word of God says. For I am the Lord I speak, and the word which I speak will come to pass. It will no more be postponed. For in your days of rebellious house, I will say the word and perform it, says the Lord. Anytime God speaks, he performs the word. The word that I speak will come to pass. But now you need to see what is he saying in what circumstance. Because most of us blame our situation because of circumstances. I'm born in the wrong family. That's why I'm living in poverty. That's fine. That is the past, but not now. Since you know the gospel of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I see a complete turnaround. You don't need to depend on your family status or what people did against you. Now you have the word of God. Hallelujah. Elijah said, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, the bean of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord send rain on the earth. What a guarantee. The woman went away and did according to the word of Elijah. First, feed the man of God. She and he and the household ate for many days. The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord, which is spoke by Elijah. What a wonderful word. No matter the crisis in the land, I can see fruitfulness in your hand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You see, the best way to do it, listen to the counsel of the elder in the land. One of the elder in the land is David. He said, Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the ways of sinner or sit in the seat of mockers. If this woman follow the counsel of the atmosphere of the land, the famine was everywhere, but yet God spoke to her. The word of God said, God commanded her to feed the man of God. When she was saying, I have no bread, the only one I have, I will eat with my son and die. Suddenly, his mind was open. Mm, God told me that I will feed somebody. And that person must be this one. The first person I will deal with is this man. Okay, let me feed him. Praise the Lord. But if she entertained wrong counsel in his mind, he said, there is famine in the land. There is COVID-19 in the land. So finance is a problem. No ways, I'm not paying my tithe. I'm not giving my offering. I will keep it. Guess what will happen? Death will enter the house of the widow. Yet God did not choose a rich woman to feed the man of God. He sent him to the poorest person. Number one, she's a widow. Number two, a, widow, a poor widow. And she's collecting. She could go and buy. I know we buy wood. On the garage, you can go and buy wood to put fire. But now this one is collecting wood at the gate of the city. You can see how poor she was. She was not qualified in anything, but God, for God to provide for her, I must send my man to this woman. That which she has, that is exactly I want to share with her. Hallelujah. Amen. I know people with heavy saving. Heavy saving, the day they die, the family rejoice. They say, we will eat this money. He was a stingy man. <laughs> 
And you know, when somebody's eating your money that never worked for it, they will do whatever they want to do. Why don't you invest it for the kingdom of God? So that you may have your mansion like Abraham. I told you we say amen. amen. All these young people, you must learn to give God now. You must learn to sacrifice. Sacrificial offering. You are giving heavily. You are preparing your future. You cannot move anybody by your giving, including God. Because whatever you are giving God, God is making sure you will have the best of the best. I thought we say amen loud and clear. She went away and did according to the word of Elijah, and she had food every day. The bean of flour was not used, nor did the jar of oil run dry, according to the word of the Lord which is spoke by Elijah. You know what? There is a man of God. Many, many years ago, because this gospel, many, many years ago, um, People did not know the principle of paying tithe, giving, offering, feeding the man of God. It was not there. This pastor can pray and fast. And yet, they will keep on eating vegetable every day. Vegetable every day. The wife was tired. He called his husband. He said, I know you are a man of God. This your God doesn't feed us with meat. Is it only vegetable every day? The marriage that I came here is to eat vegetable every day. What kind of God are you serving? The man of God also was concerned. He said, God, did you hear what my wife is saying? I don't want to lose my marriage. Can you do something? Let her begin to eat meat. And now God said to the man of God, tell her to cook vegetable as usual. But she must not open the pot when she's cooking. She will know that the food is ready. Then she can open the pot. When she opens the pot, she might not see what is inside. She can just put the spoon and bring the food and put it on the, on the plate. The man of God called his wife and said, you listen to me and do what, you will, what I will tell you. What I'm telling you, God told me. Go cook your vegetable, as usual. When you go, when the food is ready, you will know. When you are digging, putting a spoon to, get, to collect food, don't look at inside. Just put on the plate. And the woman obeyed her husband. She will open the pot, collect food, put it in the plate. Inside the pot was vegetable. When it gets into the plate, it's meat. Inside the pot was vegetable. When you put it in the plate, it was meat. They will put enough for the husband, enough for the children. And they will close without looking. For one week, they ate meat every day. The next week, she said, I must see what is inside. And that was the end of miracle. <laughs> I'm praying that you will never stop your own miracle in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Last time when you had a heavy breakthrough, what did you do to get that breakthrough? God in heaven, put it in your hand. Why? Because your heart, good heart. You're a person who's not living for yourself. You are also living for others. You want to make sure everybody has some food. Everybody has something. Then God said, mm. God commanded the widow of Zarephath, feed my servant. There is somebody right now, as I'm telling you, is receiving instruction concerning your business. Amen. They will come and put money in your business. Amen. They will come and do good things for your business. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked or stand in the ways of sinner or sit in the seat of mockers. 
but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law, he meditates day and night. This man is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yield its fruit in season, whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do, prosper. There are people, whatever they do, prosper. From now on, what? Cases of working hard. Break in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Whatever your hand will do shall prosper. Whatever your hand is doing, I command them to prosper now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Now, I want to tell you that uh, what comes out of your mouth determines your future. Everything you say, before you say it, is coming from your heart. Then it will come out of your mouth. I love what Jesus said from the book of Matthew, chapter 15. Matthew, chapter 15. Let us take it from verse 18. Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. But the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. This make them unclean. The things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. Now, if you have that discipline to control what you must think in your mind, you will not speak things that will make you unclean. Do you agree with me? But if you cannot control your mind and your heart, the things you will say will make you unclean. Why? Verse 19. For out of the heart come evil thoughts. You can disallow evil thoughts in your heart. You can say, I refuse to think evil. You can. Murder, adultery, sexual immorality, death, false testimony, slander. These are the things that make you unfit to stand before the Lord. When those things are in place, you may not achieve greatness. You will see the same problem repeating again and again. This is what I want to say. In the book of Luke, chapter 22, verse 56, New Living Translation. Luke, chapter 22, verse 56. A servant girl noticed Peter in the firelight and began staring at him. Finally, she said, this man was one of the Jesus followers. He's talking to Peter. And you know what Peter said? Peter denied Jesus. Woman, he said, I don't even know him. Hmm. Verse 59. Verse 59. About an hour later, someone else insisted. This must be one of them because he's a Galilean. He's talking about Peter. Listen to the answer of Peter. Peter said, man, I don't know what you are talking about. And immediately... While he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. Jesus told Peter, you will deny me three times. Before the rooster crowed, and it came to pass. Why are you telling us this? Okay, before I continue, let me tell you one more story. Then you put them together. Jesus said in the book of Matthew chapter 10. New Living Translation. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32. Read with me if you can. Everyone who acknowledge me publicly here on earth, I will also acknowledge before my Father in heaven. Verse 33. 
but everyone who deny me here on earth, I will also deny before my Father in heaven. When you refuse to testify about Jesus, when you refuse to win soul, you are busy denying Jesus. I don't know him. I don't know what Jesus can do for you. But when you testify for Jesus, you win soul, you acknowledge him in the land of the living. And there is something that will do for you also. Now, you see, I told you, Peter denied Jesus three times. You heard what Jesus said. Anyone who denied me before men, I will deny him before my father in heaven. We all know that Peter was an apostle of Jesus Christ. Do you know that Peter lost his job as an apostle? He's no longer as an, as an apostle because he denied Jesus. And Jesus said, anyone who denied me, I will deny him also. In other words, in a good word, Peter now is under a case. Now, let us read from the book of John chapter 21, verse 3. Let us take it from there. John chapter 21, verse 3. Peter said, I'm going out to fish. He told Thomas and Nathaniel, I'm going out to fish. What do they say? They went out. We are coming with you. We'll go with you. They went out and got into the boat. But that night they caught nothing. Peter had some anointing of catching nothing. You will work very hard and catching nothing. How old are you? 40 years. Where is your property? Not yet. I'm still renting. But if we check you well, you are not renting, you are staying under the leadership of your friend. So you yourself, you don't have anything. That thing is coming to an end today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That is the gospel. That is the good news. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I did not see that boy here. I was going to tell him to stop doing what he's doing. Anytime you see a nice car parking in the parking here, you will go behind that car, do selfie. Tomorrow you see it on the Facebook, everybody heartbroken. I, I go further to read even the comments. They put the comment, they say, is it that your brand new car? You say, you think I'm playing around in this world of the living? <laughs> Praise God, I'm not the owner of the car. <laughs> i break that case in your life in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now, Thomas. Thomas and Nathaniel, they follow Peter, a man under a case. Do you think they will be successful? I'm asking you, do you think they will be successful? Yes. Number one, the person you follow, you must know him. If you don't know him, it's become a problem. My first question is, who is Simon Peter? Anytime Jesus is calling Simon Peter, that means Jesus has no peace. Simon means pebble. Is not stable. You see, when you go in the seashore, you build a house with sand. Are you with me? Then you can kick that house. Is it not so? You break it again. Simon is like that. That is the meaning of Simon. So he's not a very stable person. But when you hear Jesus calling si uh, Peter, Peter, he goes straight to call him Peter. He's talking about the stone. Can you go and just kick the stone? <laughs> you know that you, you want to create another problem here. It is painful to strip on the stone. Hallelujah. That's why Jesus had to tell him from uh, sand to a stone. 
Peter, a rock. So Peter is unstable. He denied Jesus three times. Now let us leave Peter. Let us go to Thomas. This is his friend. <laughs> you know what? First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 33 say, do not be misled. Bad company corrupt good character. Evil association corrupt good manner. Keeping bad company corrupt good manner. What happened? Let us talk about Thomas. Who is Thomas? Thomas, number one, is one of the twelve. The disciple told him, we have seen the Lord after his resurrection. He died and he rose again. You know what Thomas said? Unless I see the nail mark in his hand and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Who is Simon? Who is Thomas? A doubter. He's a friend of an unstable man. A doubter, somebody that is unstable, they are friends. They attract each other. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 26, a week later, Jesus came and stood among them. Thomas was with them. Jesus said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, <clears throat> put your finger here. See my hand. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Jesus told Thomas, stop doubting and believe. Stop doubting and believe. You know what? Thomas said, my Lord, my God. Who is Thomas? Thomas is a double-minded man. He can call you Lord. He can call you God. But when you are not around, ah, I don't believe in what he's saying. <laughs> can you see Thomas in your life? It is your responsibility to discover Simon Peter, Thomas in your life. Yet for Jesus to call these people to, to follow him, he prayed and fasted all night. And he picked them up in his ministry for us to learn a lesson. You will always have some Thomas. In the family, they are there. Among your friends, they are there. Okay, let us leave Simon Peter. And uh, Thomas, let us take Nathanael. Who is Nathanael? You will know this man in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 45. John, chapter 1, verse 45. When I read the Bible, I see the name of somebody. I need to know the meaning of his name. I need to know his life from the Bible. Not what mankind will tell me. Why? Because whether you like it or not, life continues with different kind, of, different kind of people. When you cook your food, you put a lot of spicy. And some spicy you put on your food has no business with your good health. That spicy you put there is for the spicy to just smell. It will give a smell, nice smell. I don't know why, but they put it there. I find them a lot in my food. I must remove them. I said, why did you put this? Because I will not eat this. He said, hmm, you, can't you smell something there? <laughs> Praise the Lord. John chapter 1, verse 45. Philip found Nathanael and told him, we found the one Moses wrote about in the law and about whom the prophet also wrote, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. 
listen to Nathanael. Nazareth, can anything good come from there? <laughs> Nathanael asked, come. Philip uh, said to him, come and see. Come and see. You know what, when they met with Jesus, this man that said, can anything good come from Nazareth? <laughs> He began to worship Jesus. You know what happened? Jesus asked him. Jesus told him, you are the, let me read it from the word of God. Praise the Lord. Verse 47. Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him and said to him, behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no deceit. Listen to Nathanael. How do you know me? Before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, listen to Nathanael 40, 49, verse 49. Please read with me if you can. Nathanael answered and said to him, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Eh? Say it again. Are you not the one that say, can anything good come from Nazareth? Who is Nathanael? Double-minded person. When you are out, he's out. When you are called, he's called. When you are not around, he says, I don't believe him. The three of them met together. Simon, Thomas, and Nathanael. Three of them. What did Simon say? I'm going to fish. What do they say? Let's go. All of them, you don't trust anybody among them. Remember Peter just cursed himself. Eh? My friend, the, your friend he, that is under a case, the moment you join him, the case also follow, follow you. The case also follow, follow you. And you know what? Jesus indeed is the redemptor. Jesus came to redeem mankind, not to judge mankind. When you look at this story, number one, you need to understand this. People who smoke Dhaka, they, they know each other, even if they never met before. Yes, how are you? Fine. Can we meet? Yes. Do you have something there? So you will see the signal. They attract each other. I'm praying that you will never be attractive to them in Jesus' name. Simon told Peter, Simon Peter told Thomas, Nathanael, and the two other disciples, I'm going out to fish. They say, we'll go with you. So they went out and got nothing at all. They caught nothing that night because of the case upon one person. Verse 4, early in the morning, John chapter 21, verse 4. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciple did not realize that it was Jesus. Verse 5, he called out to them, friend, haven't you any fish? No, you know, Peter is here with the anointing of catching nothing all night. So it's a problem. We don't have anything. Verse 6, read with me verse 6 if you can. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to hold the net because of the large number of fish. The first time you found the fish in the deep and it was the boat of Peter. The second time, Peter emptied the boat again. Remember what Jesus said to Peter, follow me. That means he did not follow Jesus completely. That's why he denied Jesus. Praise God for prayer. Jesus prayed and told Simon Peter, Satan has to shift you, but I pray for you. When you are restored, strengthen your brothers. Jesus already prayed for, he told him the full story of his life. Praise the Lord. So Peter he had the blueprint of his life through Jesus Christ. 
Hallelujah. Now, you can see that uh, the breakthrough they had now is not in the deep. Now it's on the right side. Why on the right side of the boat? Where Jesus is sitting today? Where will you be sitting today? Do you know that we, we have the right to sit on the right side of God? I don't want, I don't want to know who's on the left. But I'm making sure you are sitting on the right side of the Lord in Jesus' name. <laughs> Throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some fish. And they caught a lot of fishes. Large number of fish. Jesus said to them, bring some. Let us eat. And they put the fish together. They discovered that uh, 150, 153 large fish was there. Even with so many, the net was not torn. The net was not broken. I want to tell you this. When God gives you abundance of blessing, he will also give you wisdom to handle it. Amen. The net was not broken. Jesus said to them, come, let us have breakfast. No one of the disciples there asked him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time Jesus appeared to his disciple after he was raised from the dead. But why Jesus appeared for the third time? And why these things is written in the Bible? Why Jesus have to appear for the third time? Number one, Peter denied Jesus how many times? Three times. The three times, the third time that Jesus appeared, he had to solve the problem that is in the life of Peter. Because he's no longer an, an apostle. Peter is an ordinary person. Automatically, the people that follow Peter, they join in the cases, they join also in the denying apostolic of Peter ministry, they lost it. Jesus have to restore. Jesus have to reinstate Peter. Why? Because he prayed for him when Satan came to ask for him. When men of God are making mistakes, it's because you refuse to support him also. You refuse to talk to him also. Don't be afraid. Sit with him. Call him for breakfast, but not me. <laughs> sit with him, tell him he will understand and he will tell you why and you will help the man verse 15 John 21 verse 15 when they had finished eating Jesus said to Simon Peter Remember, I told you anytime Jesus is calling Simon, he starts by calling Simon Peter. Then you know that uh, <laughs> there is a problem here. Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than all these fish that you just caught now? Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lamb. You don't come in the house of God as a strong person. You come in the house of God as a lamb, innocent lamb with wounded, with many problems. You need to be fixed in the house of God. You need to be restored in the house of God. But not everybody will be ready to help you because they don't know these things. Feed my lamb. Why? Because the lamb has been eating dry grass. The lamb, the situation is a problem. They are not eating green pasture. Feed my lamb. Verse 16. Again, Jesus says, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, 
Read with me if you can. Take care of my sheep. Do what? Take care of my sheep. Mm -hmm. Take care of my sheep. Why do you pray a lot? Why do you, you are always in the church, three days, four days? Take care of my sheep. I may not take care of you financially, but I know how to take care of you spiritually. Take care of my sheep. Feed my land. Take care of my sheep. Verse 17. The third time, he said to Simon, he did not call him Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know what? You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Feed my sheep. The sheep of God. The lamb of God. There is a job you need to do. Feed my lamb. Take care of my sheep. Feed my sheep. Three times. And then Peter was restored. He denied Jesus three times. Jesus came and reversed whatever he did three times. And it was the third time he appeared to him. Jesus asked the Lamb of God to take away the sins of the world. Listen to this. You may forget all the teaching, but don't forget what I will say now. Always think and act like Jesus. Did you hear what I just said now? Think and act like who? Like Jesus. Think and act like Jesus all the time. Not sometimes, all the time. Think and act like Jesus. When Peter denied Jesus, it was in public. Everybody could see. When Jesus looked at him in the eyes, Peter was finished. He said, ah, this man told me what I'm doing now. Look at this. What kind of family I'm coming from? What did my mother feed me the first day I opened my mouth to eat? <laughs> Most of the time we blame our circumstances. But we don't need to. Because today we have the word of God. God bless you. Please close your eyes by your head. You are here, you say, Apostle, please pray for me. I want Jesus to be my Lord and my Savior. I will do it now. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior anywhere you are, even those are on, uh, online praying with us, watching me now. There is no distance in prayer. I will pray for you. You want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior? Even if you know that uh, you backslided, you are not walking properly with God. Anywhere you are, raise your right hand. I will pray for you now. Right where you are, say this with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Please forgive all my sins. Come into my heart. Save my life. Write my name in the book of eternal life. As from today, I'm born into the family of God. I'm born again. Amen. You've done well to give your life to Jesus. I can't tell you by now that your life is not in the hand of anyone so that you can blame people. Your life is in the hand of God. Keep praying with us. Keep watching. Make sure you are joining us if you are far. Make sure you are joining a living church and the Lord will be with you. Praise the Lord. Amen. Wonderful. Because of uh, time, I want us to go quickly to let my people go. Prayer point. Praise the Lord. 
Before we go to let my people go prayer point, I know that you have your tithe, you have your offering. Be free to use the bucket. Uh, Aisha, pass the basket quickly. And uh, some of us, check the number on the phone. Uh, check the number on the screen. They will display the number. You can cash up. You can uh, uh, put uh, to those bank accounts that is displayed on the screen. Uh, all the glory to God. Amen. We give here on earth, God receive them in heaven. Whatever we give here on earth, make sure God receive them in heaven. God does not receive every offering. If you kill people to bring money in the house of God, don't do that. Keep it for yourself. If you do prostitution to come and pay that and give offering out of the money of prostitution, don't do that. It's an abomination unto the Lord. God will not accept that offering. Do the correct things. Don't steal money from your husband and come and bring it here as offering. Don't do that. Don't bring stolen money. Be fair. Give in righteousness and holiness. God will bless you. Amen. Amen. Beautiful. Because many people think that, ah, my pastor is after money. No, no, we are not after that stolen money. We are not after blood money. Don't kill innocent people to make money. Don't do that. Don't. Don't bring that money in the house of God. Even if you bring it, God in heaven will not receive it. Make sure you are giving something that God is receiving from heaven. I thought you would say amen. amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Wonderful Jesus. Our God is good. All the time. Now, you will stand up on your feet. The Let My People Go prayer point is a weekly prayer point that you need to pray them. I will ask you to pray them three times a day. During this critical period in the land of the living, make sure 